Okay, let's now go from the story of circulometry to the story of trigonometry. But to get there, I actually have to attend to one question that might be, have been in your mind all along. I mean, everything we've done is based on a circle of radius 1. We worked out the height of the sun based on a circle of radius 1, the openness of the sun based on a height of a circle of radius 1 for a given angle of elevation, x. Great! But what if I want to work with a circle of a different radius, radius 2 or 7 or 94.6? Who knows what? Could I still work out height and openness for circles of a different radius? And the answer is yes. Could I do a very sort of simple natural thing? I've developed a whole theory for this scaled picture. This, if I just scale it up to a different radius, then I can just copy this picture over. For example, suppose I do want a circle of radius 2, then I say please go to a photocopier and double everything. In which case I'll get this picture twice as big. Now, what do I mean by twice as big? Well, all the lengths will become twice as long. On a photocopy, angles don't change, so it'll still be angle x, but now it'll be an angle x, but twice as long. Still the same angle, but now radius 1 is now radius 2. Um, I did call this sine of x before, but this length now will be twice as long. It'll be twice sine of x. And this was overness, was cosine x before, now it'll be doubled. Twice cosine of x, and bingo. And now I can just work with, work with double sine of x and double cosine of x to work out the height and openness of a circle of radius 2. Or I can do this at any radius I like. I can do this at a radius, I don't know, I'll just call it r, I'll be abstract. If I scale by a factor r, I get a circle of radius r, in which case the height is now r times sine of x and the openness is now times r times cosine of x. All I have to do is just scale up my work by factor r and everything would be grand. Brilliant, brilliant, great. Great, great, great. So actually I can do this theory for any circle of any radius I like. Now comes the story. In the 1500s, a fellow by the name of Reticus, Georg Joachim Reticus, decided to write a book about this particular theory. And he said, do you know what? Do you know what? I'm going to write in such a way. I'm going to really focus not on the story of circles, not going to talk about circulometry. I'm going to focus on this part of the picture. What you're seeing all along here is the right triangles. He says, let me get rid of the all emphasis on circles. In fact, I won't even mention circles. All right, I might be, I might be being a bit, bit rude to Reticus here because he's a very clever fellow. But he decided to write a book that focused on that part of the picture. Now, we in our minds should have the circles still in our brains. It's there. It's really circulometry. But he's going to focus on right triangles. Now, his book was so influential, it actually, decided, it actually influenced the curriculum, how we're going to teach this theory to students. And often you'll see a curriculum begin this way. No mention of circles. He says, here's a right triangle. Step one, let's give the different sides of this triangle a name. So I might want to focus on this angle x here. Okay, it's fine. Uh, this side already has a name. It's already called the hypotenuse. But let's call the side that's opposite the angle you're interested in the opposite. And let's call the side that's adjacent to the angle. Well, there's actually two sides that are adjacent, but one's already got a name. The one that doesn't have a name, we'll call that the adjacent. So step one, become familiar with those three names of the sides of a right triangle. And then step two, uh, no mention of circles, we're going to say, we'll define sine of the angle to be the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. And we'll define cosine to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And while we're at it, why not, if that's just two ratios, why don't we just give names to all six possible ratios? I could do opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, I could do opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, let's call that the tangent of x. Let's do adjacent over opposite, and let's call that the cotangent of x. Uh, that's four, there's more. You could do hypotenuse over adjacent, let's call that the secant of x. And let's do hypotenuse over opposite, and we'll call that the cosecant of x. Weird names. But he said, people say, just have names for everything. Why not? Now, your curriculum probably focuses on three of them. Three of them. Those three names. Those three names. And I've got lots of things to ask about this. Sine and cosine. They're words I've used before. Tangent. That's actually a word I've used before in a completely different context. Tangent. What's a tangent? A tangent to a circle is a line that just touches the circle. So what has opposite over adjacent got to do with lines just touching circles? Secant is a word in geometry's world. The word secant is a line that cuts through a circle. What does the ratio hypotenuse over adjacent have to do with cut lines cutting through circles? This is very bizarre. This is very bizarre. But Reticus was a very smart fellow. So I'm actually going to explain these names right now. But first of all, first of all, I'll get rid of the scary ones. Uh, this is often left to pre-calculus, so I don't know, you know, you can do it anytime you want, but there it is. We'll focus on those standard ones. But first of all, the very first two standard ones. Is Reticus right to call opposite over hypotenuse sine? 
Well, he is. He's a smart fellow. This is where it comes from. Opposite in this picture is this one. Whoops, I lost my pen. This is the opposite. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. So opposite hypotenuse would be, if in my picture, it'd be r sine of x over r, which is sine of x. Yes, he was right to call that sine of x. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent r cos x divided by r would be cos x. Yes, he's correct to call it that. Brilliant. But then he went on and did other strange things. He also called opposite over adjacent, uh, that would be r sine of x over r cosine of x, opposite over adjacent, which is sine of x over cosine of x. In fact, you've probably seen that in your books. A lot of people say tan of x is sine x over cosine of x, which is correct, because in the original picture, that's what it is. Actually, your books might go a little bit further. Um, Opposite over adjacent looks like rise over run. Looks like sine over cosine. The autumn about rise over run. So people might say this is the slope of that hypotenuse. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's just there it is. But here's the thing. It all seems mysterious. All seems mysterious. Um, he said, okay, memorize those ratios, off we go. Grand. And then, uh, so what do we do? So you memorize those ratios. In fact, some students have trouble memorizing those ratios. So we have little mnemonics like so ka toa to help with those ratios. Have you seen that before? Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Great. Um, actually, I should point something out. In the 1950s in America, apparently it's very popular to do this. Um, Oscar had a heap of apples. Sally counted them. Can you see where that's coming from? Oscar had O-H, a heap, A-H, of apples, O-A, sine, cosine, tangent. That's the order. Brilliant. Um, I hear in Britain, they used to say something like this. Uh, Tommy on a ship of his caught a herring. That seems very old fashioned, very British to me, but Tommy on a ship of his caught a herring. There it is, tangent, sine, cosine. Wow. Um, in India, they don't call their actors and actresses actors and actresses, they call them heroes and heroines. And apparently, this is popular in some parts of India. Once hero and heroine overacted. O H A H O A, and you just meant to know your order sine, cosine, tangent. Anyhow, the point is we've now removed the entire story of circles from this picture has now become a theory of right triangles. Please memorize these ratios and I'll always all set for that. Now, whoa, about a couple of decades later after Reticus wrote this book that influenced how curriculum is done for this story, another fellow by the name of uh, Pitticus, P Pitiscus, can't say his name, uh, 1595, 1595, uh, Bartholomew Pitiscus, can't even say, it's so hard, Pitiscus, look him up, check my history here. A fellow said, okay, we need a name for this theory. The theory can't be something like circleometry because it's not about circles anymore, it's about right triangles. And he's the one that said, let's call it trigonometry. He's the one that coined the word trigonometry in the year 1595, and that stuck. So the last 400 years have been calling it trigonometry, which is late in the human story of mathematics. Welcome to trigonometry. Here it is, focused on right triangles. My point is, this is actually very, a um, little bit sad for me as an educator because now it looks like X can only be an angle that makes sense for a triangle between zero and 90 degrees. It can't, it can't even be 90 degrees itself. It can't even be zero degrees itself. So in which case, we just reduce the theory to a certain type of angles and then it becomes a scary thing when you start doing pre-calculus and say, oh no, no, don't think, don't think triangles. Think of this thing called a unit circle and do all sorts of angles and then it just becomes strange and confusing. It's actually backwards. So when I do teach trigonometry, we start, I start, with the story I just gave in these videos and off we go. And then say, by the way, now let's focus on what, what Reticus did and actually now look, at, look what our textbook says and off we go and it starts to make sense. Except one part still doesn't make sense. I've got to explain the word tangent. Why did Reticus, a very clever fellow, call the ratio opposite over adjacent, rise over run, sine over cosine? Why do you call that tangent? And why do you use the word secant in another ratio? And why do you use the words cosecant and cotangent? That's my next video. All right, he's a good guy. He had smart thinking and he had clever reasons for calling it tangent and secant. Back in a moment.